Welcome back to part three. We are still working on our sonic screwdriver. We are now going to be at row 76. We'll be working on the wrong side. And we'll start with our main color. If you are finding this video randomly, you need to go find parts one and parts two so that you can get to this point in your square. Row 76 starts with, of course, chain three. One in the back. Four in the front. So automatically now you know that this row is not going to be like the millions of other rows that we've done because we're only doing four in the back. Of course, this is the beginning of a new video, so really nothing that we've done is like anything we've ever done. But if you were doing the rest of the pattern, you know that I was getting bored with all of these lines that are the same. So this one, we only did four, and now we're going to do eight in the back. And of course, this is the wrong side, so you don't really know what kind of a picture it's making. You can flip it over and take a peek, or you can look at the chart if you downloaded the free PDF. Or you can just keep crocheting until you're done and find out what it looks like then. And remember the most important thing for all these windows is that they're all lined up properly. Even your stitch count can be right, but if you've gone through the wrong window, then it messes things up. So on this side of the screwdriver, we have five in front. Then we have this one in the back, that's our borderline, and the end stitch right on the side. Now we're not ready to turn our work because we have to do the accent color. You can turn yours if you want to peek at what you've just made, but I'm not going to turn it over until I'm done row 77. Chain three. It's in the back. If everything's straightened out, some people forget that this likes to flap. I mean, it's a flap that likes to move. I don't know what I'm saying. Then we have five stitches in the back. Make sure that you are going on the right side of all these lines and windows. two, three. Oh goodness, come on. <laughs> That's our fifth. Then we're gonna have two in the front. And it does kind of line up with what you had before, so it's not too hard to find your stitch. And then it's going to go back, front, back. Sometimes it's easier to remember if you can put more than one stitch in the same thought. Uh, apparently my hands are getting crazy today. It's a bit cold today. You can probably hear my furnace is on. It is supposed to be spring, but it is chilly. Then we're going to do two more in the front because our screwdriver is a mirror image of itself on both sides even though the outer edges are not exactly mirrored. So then we are doing six in the back this time. So we had five in the back over here and six in the back on this side. And that end stitch is also in the back. It goes in that corner of the corner window, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. And then we're going to flip our work and see what we created. We made these little doodads. That's kind of fun, right? Now we're working on the right side. These tails have to come out of the way. They're in the front. We're on row 78 now using our main color to chain three, put 
put one in the front because that's the border stitch that locks everything together. Then we have five in the back. And eight in the front, so make sure that you're not pulling that. I mean, when you're working, if you're not counting, it's easy to keep going and get that in the wrong side. So this is gonna go from one end of the screwdriver to the other. You can count them if you like, but that's the visual cues that you're gonna look for. It's just keeping the lines straight And we have four in the back. One in the front here. And the end stitch right on the side. Now to keep my yarn from getting all tangled, I put my project up and over. Oops, my hook was not on there. Oh boy, it's going to be a good day. Hey? <laughs> Row 79, chain three in front, and then we have six stitches in the front. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're gonna put two in the back. And then we have our front back front, which lines up with these. Moving front, then it's hiding in the back, and then front again. And our mirror image means we're going to do two in the back again. And then we'll have five stitches in the front to get to our final end stitch in the front as well. Now, this is row 80, and if you saw my previous video, you know I like to put these stitch markers every 20 rows. That helps me to count so I don't forget where I have been. And if you saw my very first video, you'll know that I made a bit of a goof. I don't know, I was thinking that this pattern only had 80 rows. So I thought that when we reached row 39 that we were about halfway, <laughs> and we're not. So you can just sort of laugh at me, I guess. I, I don't know, I just do silly things sometimes. Could have looked at my pattern before putting all that in there, but I thought I knew it was a, what I was doing. So now this is row 80. This is our halfway point. So we've got a little bit more to go. <laughs> so we did our chain three. I put the stitch marker because it's row 80 and that tells me every 20 rows. And then I did one in the back and then we have four in the front and this is actually going to be like the same as the last row that you just did four eight and then five um when you flip it then you get five eight and four but really it's all the same if you're following those visual cues you can pay attention to where the screwdriver is right uh, I like to count. I don't even bother looking at what I'm crocheting half the time. My brain just says stitch, 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 and I just count. 
and that's how I sometimes get into trouble if I'm not really paying attention, but uh, mostly the counting helps me. So maybe you're the same, maybe you're different, I'm not sure. There's no right or wrong. Please don't tell me I'm wrong. That's really what I'm saying. I'm pretending like I'm comforting you. There's no right or wrong, do whatever you like. But really I'm just like, please don't tell me I'm wrong. I'm doing my best I can. Okay, it is daytime and I had sleep, but I'm still silly. Maybe I'm just always silly. You can mute me if you want. It is allowed. I won't even know. You could tell me in the comments, I suppose. Um, yeah, you got so annoying and then you told me I could mute you and I did. That would be a fun comment to get. <laughs> uh, anywho, we are now doing the five stitches in the front. And we know that we've gotten to our borderline here and it has to go in the back. And then we do our final stitch on the end. Zoop. Row 81. Pretty much the same as the other ones. We're going to keep doing this little design there. Five in the back. Um, did you need me to stay the stitches out loud? So it's on the screen and it's the same as the previous rows and you can see me doing them. But if you want me to read it out loud, I can. That was just five in the back, two in the front, back, front, back. And now we're doing two in the front again. You can always count them, right? One, two, three, four, five in the back, two in the front, back, front, back, two in the front. And then we have six in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And our end stitch, make sure everything's lined up again. It has to be right on the edge in the back still. Row 82, chain three, your accent tails are up here in the front. Make sure that they are always where you want them. One in the front here to line everything up, then five in the back. Two in the front, we're right on the edge here. Then we put one in the back and then we do it again. So if you have an old copy of the pattern, you won't have brackets. And then when I updated the pattern, I put those things in brackets because that's how my patterns usually work when it's a repeated thing. And it means that when you see the beginning of the bracket and the end of the bracket, you follow it, then it tells you how many times to start over and you do it again. So I know some people do have difficulties with the brackets. I have a tutorial or at least a deep explanation on my website of all the bracket stuff, but um, there's not too many brackets in this pattern, which is surprising to me actually, because you would think that there would be a lot of repeats, but I guess I don't really think about how the pattern's going to look written when I'm drawing up the picture. So we did change this row. It's slightly different than the ones below. You can see the white pokes out more. So make sure you're doing it right. That's really what I'm trying to say. Just double check your work. You don't want to have to pull it apart. Rip it, rip it, rip it, frog it, right? We are going to finish this off with uh, four in the back. One, two, three, four, 
three, four, and then our stitch in the front to keep those borders locked in tight, and the end stitch on the side. Row 83, I have my yarn kind of twisted underneath the project to try and keep it out of the way. I like that the yarn doesn't need to be cut all the time and it just keeps going. If you get too many colors going, then it can get crazy, but I haven't done a tutorial on colors, so we are always just simple with two colors. We're going to start with that chain three in the front and then six in the front for this row 83. Oopsies. Three, four, five, six. And then we have brackets again. So don't feel confused. I'm going through it with you. Got one back, two in the front. And then we just do that again. We put one in the back and two in the front. I'm going to put another one in the back, but now we're going to go five in the front so that one doesn't get put in the brackets because it's not the same. Two, three, four, and five. And stitch in the front. Now we're looking at the wrong side, so the accent color tails are in the back, out of the way. Do our main color, chain three. One in the back. Come on over. Okay. Then we have four in the front. I'm just going to make that loop longer. I feel like I might tug on it accidentally and then it'll pull apart. Two in the back. One in the front, two in the back again, one in the front, and two more in the back. Five in the front. One stitch in the back, and an end stitch on the side. 85, we're going to chain three. It's in the back. Remember, you have to flatten this out if you feel like it's looking wrong. Then we have five in the back. One in the front, two in the back. Do it again. One in the front, two in the back. Then we have still another one in the front and six in the back because that is our side of the square thingy. Do we, what are we calling this? A rectangle? Yeah, that's better. Five 
end stitch in the back here. Make sure that we're pulling it to get the right spot. Chain three. Oh yeah, I like to put this out of the way. I don't want you to have so many things in your eyes. We're on 86. Chain three, then one in the front. Make sure your accent tails are here in the front, out of the way. You don't want to pull them apart or cut them. And five in the back. Two in the front. It's the same as the other rows, so you should be able to find the lines that are matching up. Easy to keep everything in order. And of course those brackets, they're not too scary, right? One in the back again. Two in the front. And four in the back. That is my child ringing the doorbell because they can't seem to get the door open. They're too short or something. They don't have enough grip strength, so they just came back from the library. Dad's with them. It's okay. <laughs> One in the front. I don't know if you can even hear the doorbell. I have the little microphone on, so maybe you can only hear me. But I think you can hear the doorbell. I don't know. Okay, we're about to do row 87, although I noticed there was a knot coming up in my yarn. It was yarn that was given to me, so it was probably just that was how they joined the ball together. I don't know. Um, so I cut the knot out, and then I'll have to show you how I joined my new yarn, which could be fun. So we're going to crochet until my yarn runs out. We've got three in the front, um, six more stitches in the front. Then we have the brackets telling us to do one in the back and then two in the front. And my tail is getting a little bit short here. So I don't like to waste yarn, even though I have buckets and buckets of yarn. <laughs> but I also don't want the tail to be too short. So usually I go until I feel like it's really too short. That's where I would want to change in the stitch, but that feels too short to me. So I'm going to back up until this stitch here. And what I do is the first half of the stitch and then I grab my new yarn and I pretend like we've been crocheting with this one the whole time. Now you have to be careful with the tails because they will loosen so I kind of hold them as I go. Give it a good pinch and don't forget the chain space between your stitches and then you just keep going. Once the stitch is finished it's pretty secure not for like washing, not secure as a blanket, but it's secure enough to keep crocheting. Um, I will then, at the end of my row or project, depending on how I feel, <laughs> I just weave these in. I make sure that, I just make sure that they're secure. I don't really have tricks. I know people ask sometimes. Um, I don't like to do knots but I do like them to be secure. So I would take the tail, put it on a needle, and weave it back and forth a whole bunch, making sure to go through the actual fibers, not like just through the stitches. And of course only through white, white through white so it's hidden, and then nobody would ever even know it's there. I guess I did that down here, remember? Way back in part one when I had to cut my yarn? I don't even remember which side it was because I already took those ends and I wove them in. So that's just how I would do it here. I think that's how I do like a single crochet graph gown is how I started learning color changes and that's why that's what I do for yarn changes. 
And we are going to continue with the second bracket. Um, well, it's one bracket, but times two. <laughs> one back, two front. One back, and five front. Our end stitch, of course, we don't even have to look at the pattern. We can just look at our piece and we know that that final end stitch has to be in the front because it's that nice line on the edge. Wrong side facing us, so those accent tails are in the back, kind of out of the way. We're going to chain three, of course. One in the back, making sure those tails stay out of the way. one in the back, four in the front, one, two, three, four. Then we have those brackets again because we're making this little detail on the front. Two in the back and one in the front. Repeat it. Oops, got a bit of white stuck in there. Let's try again. Then, of course, we have to put two in the back again. So these tails from the white yarn, they're a little bit in the way. I just keep them down like this. And then we have five in the front over here. one in the back and the end stitch on the side of course just like all the other rows have been now these if when you go to do the next row you might be a little bit afraid that it's going to come apart but it's pretty secure as is not secure enough for a wash but secure enough to crochet And if you don't find that it's secure enough, you can always just start weaving that in right now. I just like to be lazy and I just do it later. <laughs> so we have our chain three in back, then we have five stitches in the back. So one, two, three, four, five, oops. Then we have front and two back. You can hear my heater turned off. It's still chilly here. The heater goes. We live in Saskatchewan, Canada. It's spring, so things are supposed to be starting to grow, but it's still too cold. Then we have another one in front. It happens to go into our scary undone stitch, but you see it held. It's fine. And then six in the back. And our end stitch is also in the back. Move my mouse because I just read it off my computer. You might be reading it on a screen. 
Although if you're following with the tutorials, you're going to need two screens or you'll have to print them, right? Although it is on the screen as well. So maybe you don't want to print it. So we're on row 90. Our accent color is to the front. So I put it around here and later I'll give my whole project a twist. We have the first stitch, of course, is in front. And then we have five stitches in the back before we get to do the very interesting repetitive inners. And by very interesting, I kind of mean boring. Um, four. Five. So then we have two in the front and one in the back and it's not necessarily boring for me to crochet it I should clarify it just sounds boring for me to keep repeating the same row over and over again if I was sitting and watching TV or something I would enjoy the boringness because it's easier to just do mindlessly but if I'm trying to tell you guys that I'm cool and interesting I feel like this pattern doesn't really do it you know what I mean so if you can see the written and follow my words and follow my stitches, we did the brackets, two, one, two, one. Then we have brackets again. And we only have four in the back on this side, five on this side, four on that side, right? We already went over that, how it's a symmetrical screwdriver, but not a symmetrical square. It's not even a square, a rectangle. You guys are going to laugh at me. <laughs> oh, I do know what I'm doing. I just don't know how to talk. And we have one stitch in the front here through that window, bring it to the front, yarn over and go, and the end stitch on the side. So just give it a little twist around there so I don't get my yarn all tangly. And row 91 with our accent. Oh, don't lose that. <laughs> I have done that before. Usually I can fix it without unraveling the row, but Sometimes I have had to undo it. Chain three in front, then six in the front. Then we have one in the back here, and two in the front. You can see that it is the same as we did before. One in the back, two in the front. Oops, my yarn, there we go. One more in the back, and then we will do a whole bunch in the front. This time it happens to be five. And a stitch right on the side and in the front. Row 92, the accent tails are in the back. We chain our three and go one stitch in the back. We're very used to that. We do that every row. The next part is pretty much the same as we've done. So I will still crochet it and you can crochet with me. And if you want to skip ahead, there's timestamps. So maybe nobody will ever watch this part. I'm not sure. Could be that 10 years from now, someone will watch it and finally say, hey, I saw you crochet every single row. And I'll be like, wow, you're so sweet. Um, there you go, yarn. Two in the back. Oops, make sure I find my actual stitch. I use my fingers to find the stitches a lot. I don't really look. I mean, I do look. But I don't always only look. It's definitely a lot of poking my finger to find the stitch. 
and one in the front again. And then of course, to balance it, we got two in the back. And on this side, we'll have five in the front. One in the back. And an end stitch. Row 93. Chain 3. It is in the back because we always keep our tails where they belong. We never make mistakes. <laughs> Five stitches in the back. One and two. And did you know that little trick? That's what I sometimes do. Three and because I have to put that chain stitch between everything. So my brain makes some noises and then I know I have to keep doing stuff. One in the front, two in the back. That is like we've been doing. You know you can do it. You know you've got this. If you want to keep watching me because I'm super encouraging, then I'll just keep going. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. And if you are muting me and you don't hear that, hmm, I guess we'll never know. One more in the front and then six in the back. Then our final stitch over here is also in the back. Oh, my yarn. This piece is getting really long. It's getting harder to flip. So we are going to start with a chain three. No surprise. And we're going to put one in the front on that borderline. Then we're going to put five in the back. What another surprise. I mean, this pattern, so many surprises. Every time I look at it, I just make noises in my head like, <laughs> which isn't even what it sounds like on the TV. But I have a little pen that's a sonic screwdriver toy slash grown up pen. <laughs> it's for grown ups. Of course, it's for grown ups. Anyway, it makes a noise like that. Then we are going to do two in the front and one in the back times two. So we're going to do two in the front and one in the back. See? I'm going to start a hip hop line. I don't know how to beatbox. That's literally my whole skills right there. You just saw them all. Balance everything out with two more in the front and four stitches in the back. I will stick to what I'm good at, which happens to be art. And I don't know if good at is the right word, but brave enough at, I think everyone can be good at art. It just takes practice. And it is a little bit of bravery to put yourself out there and say, hey, do you like this? So we've got our stitch in the front and our end stitch on the side. And then I have to bring my whole project up and around so that I can get to that yarn. There we go. It's like my project has to dance. Row 95. This is so fun to get so high up in the pattern. Chain three in front and then six in front. Now, spoiler alert, it's going to be the same thing that you've been doing. So don't even worry about it. Six, three, six, four, six, five, and six, six. Oh, I probably haven't done that in this pattern yet. That's how I count in my actual head. I usually try to keep that a secret. 
That way I know six, six. That means I know I've done six stitches and I was needing six stitches. The numbers match. And when I go back to look at my pattern, I'm looking for where it said that I did six so that I know what the next stitch is. Otherwise, if I count to six, I won't know when to stop. And if I count down six through one, then when I get to one, I go, well, how many did I just do? What section was I on? So that's what I came up with is that I say both numbers. And if you want to use that technique, you can go redhead, but I try to hide it because I think it's weird. <laughs> so I don't usually show it on the videos, mm, but that's okay. One in the back and two in the front times two. So that's how the brackets work. And then to balance everything off, we put another one in the back and then we're going to do five in the front for this row to keep it white on the sides. Although your colors might not be blue and white. Are you using different colors? I bet somebody is out there, but blue and white seems to be most common. Blue and blue, blue and gray, blue and white. That's kind of, that's kind of what I've seen. Then our end stitch in the front, of course, we know it has to go there because it finishes that borderline oh so nicely. Flip our work, we're back at the wrong side. Row 96, chain three, put one in the back. Every now and then I sit up really tall and glance at my camera to make sure I'm still on camera, still recording. I've run out of space before and not realized it and recorded like 20 minutes without actually recording anything. So I try to double check every now and then. This one, we are putting four in the front. And then, oh, look at this. Two in the back, one in the front. I think we've done this before. One, two, and one. And then, one, two, and one. And once again, one, two, and this time because we're finishing it off, we can put five in the front, go all the way across till you get to those lines on the sides, those border ones that you know what to do with. If I had a crowd in front of me, I'd be like, what do we do? We chain in the borders. Like, I don't know. How would you even answer that? Yeah, I'm definitely getting too silly for these patterns. Um, you should just mute me now and then laugh at me later. One in the back, that's what we do, and the borders, we do one in the back and an end stitch on the side. Mm -hmm. Row 97, one, two, three, it's in the back. You just have to straighten your piece out to make sure. Five in the back. One. Two, three, four, five. Then we're going to do, guess what? Same thing we always do. One in the front, two in the back. It's not always. Don't you remember we used to be doing something different? It was just right here we did something different and now I can't remember it was so long ago mm -mm -mm -mm. one in the front and two in the back the worst part about repetitive lines like this is just knowing what stitch you're on or sorry which row you're on so that way you know when to stop the repetitive right that's why it's important to keep track of your rows and that's why I'm showing you all of them in the video so that you can just crochet with me and when I change the stitch you can change it too, and you don't even have to count your rows. Although I think you probably can't watch all parts one, two, three in a row to get this far and never have counted your rows to know where you are. But it could be wrong. You could be very impressive. One, two, three, four, five, six in the back. And our stitch end back, EB. There we go. We're looking at the right side again. 
our accent color is to the front. This is row 98. Chain three, put one in the front, of course. Then five in the back. Um, it's pretty much the same as we've been doing. One, two, three, four, and five in the back. Ta da! And then we got brackets two front, one back. Just doing our little design here. And the brackets tell us to do it again. To balance it out, we put two more in the front. And four in the back. Then we have our front stitch. And our end stitch on the side. Row 99, which feels a bit like a milestone because it's right before 100 and 100 is awesome. Chain three in front and then do six more stitches in the front. One in the back, one in the front. Oh dear, this is different. It is a milestone. Aren't you excited? Celebrate. I don't know the rest of the song. Is that a real song? I'll get a copyright infringement if I sing songs. Plus people would definitely mute me. <laughs> okay, three in the back. Then we do one in the front. Come on, yarn. It is mirrored, right? So you know that it's looking the same as this side. One in the back. And then, of course, that's the end of the screwdriver. So we're back to five in the front. That's so exciting when things change, don't you think? Look at that. It's, it's doing stuff. And our end stitch in the front. I don't think you would forget, but you'll never forget once you hear me remind you every 10 seconds, right? Actually, I think on average these rows are taking me three minutes to do or three and a half or something like that. So maybe I should look closer at that. I thought it was three and a half the other day, but I don't know. 100 wrong side facing us, accent colors in the back, one stitch in the back then five in the front and then it won't be what we've been doing it's been changed so that's exciting for us two three four five we're just gonna put six in the back makes a line one two Three, four, five, six in the back. There we go. Magic. And then we do six in the front. And there we go.
one stitch in the back and our end stitch my yarn is making a fine little hole here it's like a cave a cave of wonders row 101 is just going to be simple again one two three in the back five in the back one two three four five in the back then seven in the front now I think these are locked in enough that you shouldn't grab the wrong window but definitely make sure that things are lined up properly and then you're gonna do two three four five six seven then we're gonna put six in the back it's really just the end all of them six in the back plus our end stitch in the back so you can just keep going all the way across right I like to count because my brain likes to count it makes me feel better and then I know I didn't make a stitch missing somehow which believe it or not I still do every now and then I'll just completely miss a stitch because I wasn't paying attention and you don't notice until you go to do the next row and you don't have anywhere to put something so that's why usually a mistake means you have to unravel quite a few rows because the mistake has to have happened two rows at least beforehand before you recognize that you did something wrong row 102 chain three one stitch in the front five in the back oh I wanted to put my stitch marker on row 100 it's eight ten it's 100 and because we count by twos we know that the window above it which I'm creating is row 102 so five in the back is where we were I did only one so we have to keep going two three four five and then it says eight in the front how weird is that right one two three four five six seven And then only room for four in the back. And then we have one stitch in the front. And our end stitch on the side. Row 103, chain three in front. Then we put six in front. Then we'll put seven in the back. You can see we're making that dark blue go right across, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Five 
five in the front. One, two, three, four, five, and in stitch in the front. One, two, three, on row 104. So we put one stitch in the back, then four in the front. Then eight in the back. Then we have five stitches in the front. And our stitch in the back, of course, for those border lines before we do our end stitch on the side, like usual. Chain three and back. One, two, three, four stitches in the back for this row 105. We're using our accent color, which is white for me. Two, three, and four. And then we got a little detail here. It says two in the front, one in the back. Make sure your windows are all lined up properly because now that we're going to put one in the back, we need to make sure we go through the right window. We obviously want to use this stitch, but we also need to make sure we're using the right window. That is probably the most common mistake, windows. Then we're going to put three in the front. One in the back, again, because things can stretch, you want to make sure that everything is, you can count the windows or you can just sort of stretch it out. That usually gets everything in the right place. So if you're paying attention, this, this stitch that's behind needs to be here. One in the back. Then two in the front. And then we have five stitches left in the back. One, two, three, four, five. And our end stitch is also in the back. Row 106, right side facing us, accent color tails. We're in the front here. Chain three and then one stitch in the front. We know how to do that. Then we have four in the back. Then we have 10 in the front, so it lines up here. Five. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we get three in the back. One stitch in the front. And a stitch on the side. Row 107. One, two, three in front. Four stitches in front, then we get brackets again. This time we're putting three in the back, so we we'll start here. It is making that blue line stick out a little bit farther. One, two, three. Oh goodness, there we go. The line in the front is lining up with what we've got here. And then we do it again. And it is going to line up with that other line as well. There we go, see the line? And of course we balance everything with that even whatever happens on that side has to happen on this side. So we've got three in the back again. But it only leaves us three on the outside for white in the front. One, two, three. One stitch in the front. Ta-da! And by one stitch, I really mean end stitch. You know this. Chain three. Put one in the back. We do that every time. This is row 108. We're going to have two in the front here, and then 12 in the back. So it's getting just a little bit wider than it was before. Now if you were counting, that's good. If you weren't counting, you can also count from the wrong side. We know that we'll have an end stitch, one in the back, and then three in the front, which means this one has to be the end of that 12 in the back section that we just did, right? So instead of counting 12, I only counted three plus one plus an end. <laughs> sometimes it's more confusing, but sometimes it's easier. So it's just another, another option of how to do things, right? One in the back and the end stitch. Oh, silly yarn. There we go. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I had really hoped to get it all into three videos, three separate parts, but um, there's still like half an hour left for me to crochet. So this is what we got. I had to put it on the floor to fit it in the video. And um, we'll have to see you in part four. Stay tuned.